I'm colouring with 670 coloured pencils, but the bigger challenge? They're all green. I have more green pencils than any other colour, and I could have picked a forest or a landscape scene today to make this an easier challenge, but instead I've chosen this double page spread that I've been wanting to colour for a while, which will make this green only challenge a little more interesting. I don't know if this is gonna work or just look like a green mess. The colouring is only half the challenge in these one colour videos. It usually takes me an entire day to collect and sort all my pencils before I can even start colouring. And as it turns out, I have more green pencils than any other colour. Because from the 4,000 pencils that I now own, over 600 of them turned out to be green. Which is great if you're wanting to colour a lot of landscapes or nature, but not so great if you're wanting to fit them all on your table and sort them into some kind of usable order. Do we have any more trays? I think I don't have enough trays. And you might be wondering, they're all green, right? What exactly am I sorting for an entire day? Well, with this many pencils, if I have any hope of creating a piece of art that doesn't just look like someone threw a handful of green confetti at the page, I need to be able to quickly and easily identify which of my pencils are light green, dark green, warmer green, cooler green, and how saturated they are. And fun fact, I learned today that apparently the human eye can differentiate between different shades of green more than any other color. And as you can see here, once they are sorted, some of these greens look really yellow or blue in comparison to the rest of the greens here. So even though they are technically green, I have decided to eliminate some of these today. That does also mean saying goodbye to my favorite teal. But the pencils are finally sorted and it feels good. It's kind of satisfying for a few moments before they all get mixed up again as I start colouring. Even though I'm only working with green, I want to use the different types of green to create a sense of different colours in my scene, as if it were a normal scene with green lighting or a creative green colour wash over the top. I'm really just simplifying this in my head and thinking about which areas of this picture should be darker, lighter, cooler, and warmer. So if the sky was originally blue, maybe I can use a cooler green to try to reflect this. If I use a warmer green on the shoes, the sky will look even more blue in comparison. The tree trunk can be warmer and darker than the tree leaves, making it look more brown even without actually using brown. And I can use darker greens to build up shadows everywhere, which is easier if I follow the shadows that the original artist has already designed in the line work of these pages. So even though I'm just using green, hopefully I can create the illusion of there being more colors in my final art. And I'll be honest, I have no idea if this is going to work, and I'm kind of nervous that this is going to look like a patchy mess by the end of this video. Some greens can be really pretty and are close to some of my favourite colours, but other greens kind of gross and could really just ruin this whole page if I'm not careful. I don't like that green at all. And unlike with my other colour challenges, I didn't swatch out all my pencils this time onto some other paper. So I'm going in somewhat blind. By that, I mean I haven't tested these pencils on any other paper first. And if you're not someone who uses pencils regularly, this might seem like a non-issue. But quite often, the colour inside the pencil doesn't actually match the colour on the outside of the pencil. Art is about being creative and expressing yourself, and sometimes things get a little out of control. But I at least want control over knowing what colour my pencil is going to be before I use it. So usually I create swatches, and with a challenge like this, these swatches can take hours. So many hours that today I just decided to skip this step altogether, leaving me to blindly trust these pencil manufacturers and their often inaccurately labelled pencils. This maybe matters to me more than it should, but we all have our things that we like to nerd out on. And for me, it's colour. I'm genuinely nervous about this.
Oh, this one's not okay. Okay, I gave in and did give myself a little scrap of paper to test the pencils I really didn't want to take a risk on, but it still saved me hours of swatching these few hundred pencils before colouring. So a win for my time overall. I've coloured this book by Kirby Rosanis on this channel in the past, and these were some of my favourite pages ever. I'd love to hear which has been your favourite so far, and hopefully today's page will be able to sit proudly next to these others instead of being a small disappointment hidden in the back. These one color challenges are hard enough when I'm just limiting myself to a single color. But when I'm trying to use every green pencil that I own, I'm going to have to switch between pencils constantly or I'm going to run out of space. I'm using a light pressure on most, but I don't want to be silly about this either and just add a nearly invisible line for each pencil. I want each pencil stroke to actually count and contribute to the final picture, but I think I think I've been so focused on using all the pencils that I'm losing focus on the details of the actual colouring. I haven't spent as much time as usual thinking about lighting or defining the shadows. I've kind of just kept colouring. And it's been relaxing and enjoyable, more than many of my challenges where I find myself far more stressed than I should be over a colouring book but I'm not sure that this will be a masterpiece by the end of this. Maybe just the accomplishment of using every green pencil will need to be enough, but I've still got time and a lot of pencils, so all I could do is just keep going and hope that I get through all of these pencils before I run out of room on this page. I think this is the one time it's acceptable to colour with blunt pencils, right? Because there is no way I am sharpening all of these pencils for the tiny little part they play in colouring this page. So I have a sneaky plan to save me at the end of this piece. I have been putting a few of my favourite pencils aside as I go to give myself a small range of colours for touch-ups at the end. Otherwise, I know that by the end I'll need a darker green or a specific colour to fix an area that I've missed and it will be at the bottom of my pile. So every time I get a good result from a pencil, it goes in this little pile beside my book and while I'm not looking at the brands as I go, it's no surprise to me to see some of my common favourites have ended up here. I have almost used every green pencil and the page still has just enough white space that I'm feeling more confident I can complete this challenge. I've even found a place for the neons and the metallic pencils that I personally hate, but they are all in here. And the page is coming together and looking better than I expected at this point. I'm not so worried now about the colours clashing, which is ironic since they are all essentially the same colour. And I think I've actually pulled this off without pulling my hair out in the process. There are only a few pencils left now, so it's time for the final touch-ups with the pencils that I've kept aside. And this is coming together beautifully. I'm really happy with how the cooler green sky looks against the tree and against the warmer shoe. Some of the cheaper pencils have been frustrating to work with and have given me unexpected colours or been difficult to layer, but the higher quality pencils have allowed me to adjust the colours back to what I was originally aiming for, to make adjustments along the way, and overall, I'm really happy with how this is looking. I didn't have a clear plan going into this. I didn't know what colour I wanted each area to be, other than just green. And yet, as I just started to lay down each colour, the overall picture started to become clearer. I started to see which areas needed to be warmer or cooler and which areas just didn't look right or needed adjusting. And after 13 and a half hours, from sorting the pencils to colouring the page, I am proud of what I've been able to create. 
I am starting to really enjoy these one color challenges. Sometimes a limitation in one area actually teaches you to think more creatively in other ways. And for me, these one color challenges have really stretched me to think more about my shadows, my highlights, and how to use warm and dark tones more creatively. I've now done this challenge for purple, blue, pink, and green, and I'm not sure how many more colors will do. So I'd love to hear from you if you'd like to see me take on this challenge again and which color should be next. For now, I have 670 green pencils to finally put back in their original sets. Wish me luck. <laughs> 